Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is one in a playlist on probability distributions. The playlist is planned to include a three-part series on distributions as a whole, plus individual videos on nine different types of distributions, as well as several videos on the properties of distributions. This video is on the F distribution. There will be a separate video on the subject of F as a test statistic and the F test. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of this work. You may find it helpful to view the first two videos before viewing this one, but that is not required. In the book and in these videos, there are usually four or five keys to understanding, or KTUs, which give us the overall picture in a handful of key points. For the F distribution, the first key to understanding tells us that the F distribution is used in an F test to test for equal variance. F is a test statistic like Z, T, and Chi-square. F and one of its distributions are used in an F test to test for equal variance. The F test compares samples taken from two different populations or processes. Equal in this context does not mean identical. Equal means that any difference between the two variances is not statistically significant. In this table, let's first read down the column titled F-Test. If you're familiar with T-Tests, the F-Test is analogous to the two-sample T-Test, which compares the means from two samples. Because, as we said earlier, the F-Test compares samples taken from two different populations or processes. But there is a data restriction. In order to perform an F-Test, the data from the two samples must be roughly normally distributed. Now let's look at the rightmost column titled chi-square test for the variance. Another type of t-test, the one-sample t-test, compares a mean from one sample with a specified mean. The specified mean could be a target mean or a historical average or anything else we choose. There is not an f-test for doing something like that. To compare the variance from one sample to a specified variance, we would use a different test statistic, chi-square, and we would use the chi-square test of the variance. There is no data restriction for this test. F is a test statistic. There is, is a separate video on the concept of test statistic, but briefly, a test statistic is one whose distribution has known probabilities. So for any value of F on the horizontal axis, there is a known probability of that value occurring. That probability is the height of the F distribution curve above that point. This is called a point probability. The probability distribution can also give us the cumulative probability of a range of values of F, like those in the shaded area. In an F test, the F distribution is used to calculate cumulative probabilities for the significance level alpha and for the p-value p. F is calculated as the ratio of two variances. To keep things simple and consistent, and consistent, the larger variance is entered as the numerator and the smaller variance is the denominator. This is true except for ANOVA where the numerator and denominator are special types of variances. S sub 1 is the symbol for the standard deviation of the sample from population or process 1 and S sub 1 squared is its variance, and the same is true for sample 2. So for two samples, F equals the variance of sample 1 divided by the variance of sample 2. ANOVA uses special types of variances, MSB and MSW. MSB is the mean sum of squares between, and MSW is the mean sum of squares within. And in ANOVA, F equals MSB divided by MSW. That is explained in the article in the book and in the YouTube video, 
called ANOVA Part 2, How It Does It. The second Keto Understanding says, it takes two parameters to specify an individual F distribution. These parameters are the degrees of freedom, DF1 and DF2, of the two samples being compared. There is not a single F distribution like the distribution for the test statistic Z. Instead, like the T and chi-square test statistics, there is a family of F distributions with an infinite number of members. F is a continuous distribution. Its curve has a smooth shape, unlike the stair-step shape of discrete data distributions like the binomial. However, the F distribution can work with discrete data also. Key to understanding number three begins by saying that there is a different F distribution for each combination of values of the two degrees of freedom. There are three examples here shown here. They are not drawn to scale. In the distribution on the left, df sub 1 and df sub 2 equals 5. For the distribution on the right, the two degrees of freedom are also equal, but in that case they equal 100. Note that the distribution is more symmetrical. That happens as larger values of degrees of freedom are used. In these three graphs, the shaded area represents a 5% value for alpha, the significance level. The left boundary of alpha is marked by the critical value. Note that the critical value becomes smaller as the degrees of freedom increases from 5.05 to 2.04 to 1.39 for these three examples. If these graphs were drawn to scale, the distributions would appear narrower as the degrees of freedom grew larger. Keto understanding number four tells us more about the shape of F distributions. First of all, they all start at zero on the left. This makes sense because there can be no negative values of F. F is the ratio of two variances, both of which are, are positive numbers. You can't have a negative variance because variances are squares of standard deviations. Second, all F distributions extend to the right to infinity with the probability growing closer and closer to zero, the point par probability growing closer and closer to zero, but never touching zero. Third, they are never perfectly symmetrical, although as KTU number two states, they do get close to symmetrical for larger values of the degrees of freedom. And finally, they all have a median, which is close to one. And here on one page, are all four keys to understanding the concept of the F distribution. You may want to pause the video here and read them all together. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of F distribution. If you like this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.